Hey, what's up everybody? It's your mortgage expert, Brian McCauley here. So you're looking to buy a house in Dallas, Texas, and you're concerned about these values, and you're hearing the word appraisal, but you're wondering, what does it mean? Who's in charge? And how does it all work? Stick around in this video. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about appraisals. So as the housing market continues to trend up, we're seeing buyers out there that have concerns about values and specifically the appraisal coming in to make sure that it hits just the purchase price on the contract. So I'm going to share with you today some tips around appraisals that you need to know that are very important to you, very important to the loan transaction, and very important to the neighborhood. What happens is when a buyer goes and executes a contract on a house, normally they've all agreed on a price and that price usually consists of comparable sales in that neighborhood or in that area. So what happens is us as the lender, we want to have an appraiser that's certified go out there to make sure that the house is actually worth that, right? Because just because somebody wants to sell you a house for $500,000 doesn't necessarily mean it's worth that. So the data that's out there for the realtors to look at, but more importantly, the appraisers to look at is public record. So what happens is a lender will order an appraisal specific to that property and that purchase transaction, and that appraiser will come back with a full report. It's about 30 or 40 pages. It's usually got four or five different comparable cells in the area, um, pictures, square footage, all these things. And again, that's just to make sure that the property is not overinflated uh, to protect our investment, but also to protect yours. So these appraisers are on a panel uh, that are approved by mortgage companies. We never know who the appraiser is by law. We can't, so we can't interfere with the process. But I can tell you the ones that are on the panel specifically with us are highly qualified, local to the markets, and they do an excellent job. Um, a lot of buyers right now are still having favor with their offers and even getting a deal on properties. But as things continue to trend up, um, appraisals are going to be much more important because they're going to have to hit values if people start doing multiple offers and jumping again. So a couple things you want to know about appraisals for you as a buyer. Number one, the appraisal comparable sales and the data that appraisers and realtors use are usually a little bit in the past, like they're a month ago or two months ago or three months ago. So uh, the trends aren't always real time. Um, they're realistic, but they're not real time. Meaning if a house sells tomorrow, um, appraiser may, may or may not use that. Or if that house sells during the middle of your transaction, the appraisal's already done for better or for worse, uh, that could maybe not come into effect on the overall report and the overall value. So what we try to do all the time is make sure that the appraisals are familiar with the area. We don't want an appraiser going out to somewhere that they're not um, familiar. If there's niche schools, or renovations on the property or just anything unique that can be left out of the equation when uh, determining the value. You know, an appraisal really is, the legal definition is an estimated opinion to value. So it's not like, hey, a $5 bill is worth $5, no matter how you and I feel about it. An appraiser takes a ton of things into consideration, um, quality, condition, square footage, size, upgrades. And so why one appraiser may say a $500,000 house is worth 500, another one might say it's worth 495, another one might say it's worth 505, and actually they're all right uh, because it's an estimated value of opinion. But because the data is all public and everybody's on the same page, really, do you ever have appraisals that come in where people really disagree heavily on the value and the price? So as the market continues to trend, um, we will probably see stronger data we will probably see stronger sales. We will probably see higher price points in the areas, which will continue to push the values up. So if you're a buyer out there, it's gonna make things more expensive. That's why I would buy now, because obviously if you buy now and things continue to trend up, you'll make money on the ROI of the purchase. Second thing about appraisals I wanna to bring to your attention is, I'm seeing this a lot right now. I don't think it'll last forever, but it's a great thing for the buyers is we're actually seeing the appraisals come in higher than the purchase price, guys, that's correct. So if you put a contract on a house at 500,000 um, and in a market that's cooled off, but it's starting to heat back up, let's say that appraiser comes back and the value is actually 510,000. That's a great thing for you as a buyer for multiple reasons. One, it means you won the game, right? Um, you got a little bit of equity, you gotta feel good about it. That means the comparables in the neighborhood is still staying and trending in the right direction. And that helps you feel good about your investment. Number two is the coolest thing that a lot of buyers don't know. So let's say you had that property under contract for 500,000 and you had $10,000 in closing costs. If that appraisal comes back at $510,000 versus you just feeling good about the equity in the property, now that the home is worth that $10,000 extra, you can actually go back and amend the contract up to $510,000 and roll all your closing costs into the transaction and therefore saving you $10,000 out of pocket when you go to the closing table. 
So if your total cash to close before the appraisal came in was $50,000 and now the appraisal comes in $10,000 high and you elect to increase the sales price, roll the closing cost in so you don't have to come out of pocket. Now, instead of coming to the table with 50 grand, you're coming to the table with 40 grand. It's a much better use of the equity than just mentally saying, oh, I got a great deal. Um, people are really liking that. Again, we're seeing that in this market right now. Who, who knows how long it'll stay? But obviously I represent the buyer and I'm always in favor when they can get a great deal and start out with some equity. Um, the other thing is when you start out with equity and you roll the closing costs in the transaction, not only does it keep money in your pocket, but a lot of times our clients will take that $10,000 and do one of two or three things with it. Number one, they keep it in their bank account so they've got a stronger nest egg. It's nice to have reserves. It's nice to make sure you have some safety money. So that's always a benefit for them. Number two, um, they can use that money for something else. So let's say you've got a credit card. It's $10,000 and the monthly payment on the credit card is $200. My advice would be take that $10,000 you're saving, pay off that credit card. And what it does, it eliminates debt for you as a buyer, uh, increases your cash flow every single month and puts you in a much better financial position than you currently would be if you didn't pay off that debt. The third thing you can do is if you don't want to increase the sales price and use that additional equity for closing costs and cash to close, you can do what a lot of our buyers are doing is increase the sales price and use that $10,000 to buy down the interest rate. So if your interest rate hypothetically is 6% and you've got $10,000 in equity and you amend the sales price, you can use that $10,000 to buy the rate down from 6% to 5% or maybe 6% to 4.5%. And what it will do is it will save you a couple hundred dollars on the payment instead of just leaving that equity there and again, feeling good about it. So, uh, you know, when it comes to appraisals, um, there's a couple things about them. They're done through the bank. They're done without anybody interfering. They're done with public data and records. Everyone's on the same page and they're done with the best intention to make sure that they protect everybody's investment. But also a lot of times when the reports come back, uh, the value is there. Sometimes the value is higher and you can increase the sales price, roll in the closing cost, use that equity for something more advantageous for you as the buyer than just letting the equity sit there. So let's talk about if an appraisal comes in low, what do we do? Well, let's say you've got a $500,000 house and the appraisal comes back at 490. Now, if it's a standard contract as a buyer, you have the right to walk away if you want to. Most people don't. Uh, they try to go back to the owner and the seller and the listing agent and try to renegotiate and figure out, hey, should we bring the price down? Is that what's fair? Is that what it's really worth? Or sometimes the appraiser, they're human beings, they're imperfect. So they may have missed something in their report. They could have missed a comparable sale. They could have missed out on the square footage when they were measuring. Maybe they didn't know that house had been upgraded. Um, maybe they weren't aware that they went out and did the appraisal on a Wednesday and there was a house that actually closed the Monday before. They just didn't have access to the data and that additional data sold higher than what your property did and bringing that new comparable sale into the equation will push the value back up. So if that does happen, you have a lot of options. Uh, you and your realtor will go back to the listing agent, look at the report together, figure out where the delta is. Why does the owner of the listing agent think it's worth this? Why does the appraiser think it's worth that? figure out the disconnect in the middle and you'll either come to a conclusion, the listing you know, agent will talk to the seller and they'll bring the price down. Or if they don't feel that it's a good report, they can go back and counter back through me as the lender and we can provide the appraiser with some additional information that may re-justify a second look at a property and see if the value is actually there. The third piece on that, if it comes in low, is you can do what's called a recertification of value. This is becoming really, really popular. It's more of a timing thing. So if you've got a 30 day closing, let's say you get under contract on the first of the month and you're supposed to close on the 30th of the month. If we send the appraiser out there on the 10th of the month and he or she looks at comparable sales over the past two or three months, that's what they're gonna use. But let's say there's another buyer on your street or in the neighborhood and their property's not closing on the 10th, uh, their property is closing on the 18th. So let's say between the 10th, when the appraiser goes out there and the 30th of when you closed, another comparable sale sells after the fact for higher and it will help all parties come to the middle. When it comes to renegotiating the value, we can call the appraiser back out there and say, by the way, we weren't aware of this, but the realtor just told us 123 Main Street closed a week after for this much on the price. Would you please go back out and reconsider the value look at that comparable sale and add it back into the equation. And a lot of times that will help the value get there or sometimes even jump what the overall sales price is. So 
A uh, lot of moving parts to an appraisal, but I think it's important that both buyers, sellers, and agents out there understand how it works, what's all involved, what happens if it comes in high, what happens if it comes in low, and how to handle it. So listen, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, also share this with somebody that you know that could benefit from this information. There's a lot of noise and a lot of activity out there right now in the DFW market, and I know people can find this information helpful to them. If you want to have a conversation about your future, get pre-approved, talk about the housing market in DFW, uh, reach out to us, call us, email us, text us. We're always here for you. Until next time, stay tuned.